Hi everyone, today I'd like to show you how to do a 3D stamping and inking technique to make it look as though you've got a raised point on your card but in actual fact it's flat. This is the card we're going to make. You'd be able to use any stamps and any colours but I'm going to run through what I've used to make this. As you can see it's a flat image, there's no 3D foam or silicone there but it makes it look as though the centre is protruding or it's being matted and layered so I'd like to show you how I've done this. It's quite a cool technique and it's really easy to do. So I've started off and I've stamped an image. I've stamped the fir tree at the top and I've stamped three baubles. I've used a mask on the centre bauble and then stamped the second two like so to make it look as though the centre one is foremost in the front and then the only other thing I've done is I've started off with my blending pen just to blend a little bit of colour into the centre bauble and I'm going to finish that now so that you can see what I've done I've not done anything special I've not used more than one colour or anything to colour it in. It is literally just the blending pen. Now you'll be able to take a little bit more time over it than me, but I want to, there's a lot to squeeze in, so I want to sort of show you all of it. So there we go. That's, it's got colour all over now. Like so. So I'm happy with that. So the next thing, this is the kind of cheat thing that is great to make this. Cut out a mat that's the same size as your base image and cut out the place that you want to make your shadow in. I've cut mine right in the centre, so my mat is the same size as the white card. The square that I've cut out in the centre is the same size, uh, if not bigger than the bauble, so that it literally sits in the centre. Now you could use the artist masking paper for this so that it doesn't move, which um, is a great idea. But I've, ten I've gone for card for this, just to be able to show you and lift it off easy uh, where it is. So I'm going to place it on the top like so. I've already coloured my bauble and I'm going to use two inks and I'm going to blend in the edges. The first ink I'm going to use is the brush corduroy. So I'm going to keep one hand on the actual card and I'm just going to start to blend around the edges quite lightly to begin with and I would like to see colour all the way around. Now you can use any colour for this, but I have found that the vintage tones really can make it pop. A good idea if you're doing flowers or any kind of scene, if you mask it off like this, blue at the top, green at the bottom, blend it in and then you've got a ready-made sky. So I'm just literally going round the edges with my brush corduroy and then I'm going to get a little bit heavier with it just into the corners and then I'm going to introduce another colour just to give it a bit more of a pop like so so the colour I'm going to use next is the milled lavender the images that I've stamped have been stamped on with stays on, uh, the olive green stays on. So this is milled lavender, so it kind of a little bit of a lighter tone. And again, I'm literally just going round the outside. I'm going to go over the stamp a little bit. And then to finish this bit off, I'm going to use gilding wax. I'm going to use the light gold gilding wax. And I'm just going to pop some in the corners, just a tiny bit, just like so. 
I'm not even being really careful with it. It's just to give it a little bit of a metallic finish. Okay, so with it being Christmas, I'm not going to bling it up too much. So that's the gilding wax. Now the next part, you can do it one of a couple of ways really. You're going to need a grey pen. I've got pumice stone from the Distress range of markers. Now you can either use the template that you cut the mask and go inside and draw a line. You can use a ruler to make your line. I'm going to, for quickness, I'm going to use the mask and I'm literally just going to run my pen all the way around like so and you want to be able to see the line it wants to be quite thick you don't want a really thin line okay so that's how we get our frame next you want another dark marker but you want the fine end and I'm going to use the Distress Ranger um, chipped sa uh, sapphire. So I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to make little strokes all the way around the edge. Like little sewing strokes. And if this was a stitch, it would be a running stitch, I think. <laughs> you could do blanket stitch, over stitch, anything anything that you fancy really but it just finishes the edge off it's not that prominent but it's the finishing touches that gives the card the edge really so keep going all the way around till you get to the end and then when I get to the end I always put like a little knot at the end of my stitching so that's the actual layout of it the next thing that we need to do is just finish it off and that's to turn the edges of the card just in the corners like so. So we're going to go through all four corners just to turn it in and then that brings the eye to the centre of the card like so. So once we've done all four corners and the edges because we don't want white edges so I'll keep going like that all the way around so once you're happy with it and you feel that you've turned it in enough then you need to place it on your background now the background I've made for it I've inked the background and I've inked two corners opposite to where the baubles are hanging so as the baubles are hanging that way I think the corners opposite and that's basically for balance so I matted and layered it onto the background and then I finished it with a bow like so and that is how I've made a 3D inked effect it makes it look as though you've matted and layered but in actual fact you haven't it's very easy very simple and i hope you've enjoyed this little demonstration thank you very much for watching see you next time